Dr. Nardi here, back with another video. And in this video, we are going to talk about problem solving. And by the end of the video, I will tell you how you can actually get better at problem solving. Because we all have problems. The question is, how do we solve them? Stay tuned. So before we talk about how to solve a problem, we have to define a problem. And again, we all have problems. So if I were to ask you in the comments to put your answers down there, you'd have a bunch of them. But for this video, I'm going to say a problem is a situation in which there's a difference between a current state and a desired goal. So you want to get somewhere, you want to get something done, and you are not there at the moment. Now, problem solving, as we'll refer to it in this video, is the process of a developing a solution designed to change the state of affairs. So basically, you want to get from your current goal, or I should say your current state, to your goal. And the question is, how do you get there? There are various strategies you can use. And we're going to start by talking about a few of them. Now, uh, before I delve super detailed into the types of uh, problem solving strategies, I got to just talk a little bit about more problems. And we got to think about different types of problems you will face in the world. You will face well-defined problems. These problems are clearly defined by their goal state and their constraints. So you could easily tell uh, what this problem is about. Think about word problems in school and math. They gave you very logical, well-defined problems, right? Mary had five apples. John gave her four apples. How many apples does Mary have? Very, very well-defined. If you play games like Sudoku or Candy Crush, those have well-defined problems. And those are usually easy to deal with. However, in uh, life, we also get ill-defined problems or problems that lack a clearly defined goal state and constraints. Now, you see these problems every day. Think about it. You run into things that you just have to solve them. And maybe you don't know the rules. You don't know how to get to the end goal, but we all figure it out. Now, if you guys can think of some ill-defined problems, please put it in the description box, or I should say in the comment box below. And if you think of some well-defined problems, put them in the uh, comments below too. I will take a look at those and respond to you. Now, when we talk about defining and representing problems, it's really the process of stating the scope and the goal of the problem and organizing the knowledge needed for addressing the problem. And part of that really comes when we talk about cognition. So it's really mentally representing the current uh, and goal states. We talk and we kind of figure out in our own minds what the roles are, the constraints are, and we have to think about the allowable operations to solve the problem. So whenever you run into a problem, you're often constrained in some ways. Um, there are certain things you can do, certain things you cannot do, right? So we all operate by a set of rules and that want to get us to our goals. So we always have to keep that in mind when we're thinking about solving everyday problems. Now, what happens to people is they get caught in what we call functional fixedness. And this is focusing on how things are usually used while ignoring their potential other uses. So they, a lot of researchers that those Gestalt psychologists that I've talked about in previous videos, they say that's really a barrier to our ability to solve problems. So when we are faced with a problem, we retrieve information about the objects, right? If we have to hang string lights, if we have to climb on a ladder or get a screwdriver. Um, and we think about similar problems that involve similar objects. Uh, and then we start to develop potential solutions. And these are, are in part based on what functions the objects can perform. Uh, in the case of a screwdriver, it's based on how we've used it before. So those are the functions we consider it to do. Um, we don't really think about it as other potential uses uh, when trying to solve a problem. We usually think of it just to kind of screw in a, you know, a, a, a screw, right? That's what screwdrivers do. Or let's say your drawer is broken at your house and you don't have a screwdriver and you got to kind of reach around the back of it and tighten that little screw. How do you do it? Do you use your hand? Uh, do you use a penny? 
These are all different ways. But if you are stuck in a functional fixedness, you would think, oh my gosh, I can't fix this drawer. I don't have a screwdriver because that's what I need. Now, early theories and early theorists of problem solving, they focused on trial and error. So the idea here was that when faced with a problem, we would try out a solution and see if it worked. And if it doesn't work, then we try another one. Then we'd repeat this problem until it is solved. And over time, as we accumulate associations between problems and successful solutions, we would use these associations when encountering new problems. Especially if the new problems were similar to our old problems, we would try to apply those solutions to our, uh, from our old problems to our new problems. However, the, the trial and error approach is great and it works well when there's only a few possibilities. Uh, for example, if your problem is to try to figure out what to wear for a job interview, and let's say you're a, a, a gentleman with, that has three suits, that's easy because you can each try on each suit. Now, if it gets more complicated, if you have three dress shirts, two pairs of nice shoes, a, you know, a bunch of different possibilities, and now it's very hard to trial and error all of those combinations together. Um, so again, uh, trial and error works well when you only have few uh, options. The other type of approach that psychologists have talked about were gestalt approaches. And really, uh, how researchers talked about this, right? So this is in the tradition of the 1900s that they argued against pure associational theories like problem solving, like we just talked about. They argued that associationist uh, association theories, I should say, uh, predicted that problem solving was generally a gradual process and that many nonsensical errors should uh, occur when people try to solve problems. However, when researchers began to think aloud protocol, so you think about what you're doing, you say what you're doing out loud, that's called the think aloud protocol, it became apparent that problem solvers appeared to be used systematic strategies rather than trial and error. So Gestalt psychologists argued that, you know, we don't use a trial and error process. Uh, so the Gestalt approach to problem solving goes beyond past associations and solutions that arise out of new uh, productive processes. These productive processes include creating mental representations of the information uh, structured to achieve a particular goal. Uh, and often these solutions uh, are a result of sudden uh, breaking away of past associations, recognizing, uh, or I should say, uh, reorganizing uh, the mental representation of the problem. Uh, other times problems are solved by recognizing that past problems even ones that differ on the service features share an underlying structure with the current problem. So again, it's really about creating that mental representation of that information to achieve a particular goal. Now, whenever you think about a problem, uh, here's the thing you have to kind of think about when we talk about strategies. Uh, there's a couple different terms I want to go over. Um, when we think about recognizing past problems that share an underlying structure and solution with the current problems, there are some things we have to talk about, like insight. Insight is suddenly realizing the solution to a problem. It's kind of like you've been thinking about something, trying to figure out how you're going to do it, and then you're just walking your dog or you're in the shower, and boom, it hits you, right? Um, so those insight problems are those problems that you can't initially find a solution, and you stopped consciously thinking about, and then suddenly, boom, it emerges into consciousness, and you go, I have a solution. Other things we think about is the mental set. And this is kind of similar to functional fix fixedness, the bias I talked about, in the sense that we tend to use the same set of solutions for a similar problem. Even if there are others are out there or more simpler solutions, we tend to get stuck in the same mental set. And the last word we kind of think about, the last term I want to talk about is uh, analogical transfer. Uh, using the same solution for two problems with the underlying structure. So again, these are all approaches that uh, we try to do, whether we do it consciously or unconsciously. Now, we often kind of search, right? There's different ways we search for solutions to problems. One of those is an algorithmic approach. And this is a prescribed problem solving strategy that always leads to the correct solution uh, in problems with a single correct solution. So think math, think order of operations. You could literally follow uh, that order of operations and get to the right answer. 
that is very algorithmic. You do this, that, and this, think word problems. Do this, that, and this, you will get to the solution. And those are great when there's only a single correct solution. However, we often will take a heuristic approach. This is a, a problem strava strategy that does not always lead to a correct solution. Uh, and this is more like a general way we approach something rather than a very uh, prescript algorithm like a recipe. This is like, here's a general strategy I have. I'm going to give it a shot, see if it works. There are other strategies we could use. Uh, means end strategy. This involves repeated comparisons between the current state and the goal state. Uh, think like a GPS to figure out is that where you are. It keeps moving you along the path. It's like, okay, you're here, you're here, you're here, you're here. And it keeps comparing where you want to go. Let's say you want to get to your grandma's house in the woods. It'll take you on that path. It'll tell you, here you go. Turn left, turn right, turn here. Uh, hill climbing strategy involves continuous steps towards the goal. So this is making adjustments as you, as you go along towards your goal. And then working backwards strategy, that involves beginning with the goal state and working backwards to where you want to get in. So all of these are possible. It just depends on, on what your, your goal is and what your problem is. And not all strategies work for every problem. And really, our ability to solve problems are constrained by our cognitive systems. They're constrained by our, our, our memory, um, our, our uh, past experiences, so that cognitive schema, because that really kind of breaks down the difference between experts and novices. Now, when we gain experience with different types of problems, we learn which details of the problem are relevant and not. And that's really ties into being an expert. So that perception and attention, knowing what to pay attention, what to ignore, that really comes along with experience. When you're a novice, you don't know what to pay attention to. You don't know what's important. But when you are an expert, you know. You know what to pay attention to. Uh, when we talk about memory, for example, a chess expert can remember where virtually all the pieces of the, of the chessboard are during a game. Good luck. I cannot do that. I struggle because I am a novice. Uh, they can do this because their past experience of thousands of games allow them to chunk pieces in a meaningful manner. So it makes it easier for them. So they have more efficient memory processing. And when they talk about strategizing, experts also generally spend more time analyzing problems, adding relevant knowledge to their representation, and planning solutions. While novice and experts have the same strategies available to them, experts are better at predicting and using more effective strategies. Now, if you want to become better at problem solving, uh, some researchers put something uh, they call IDEAL, and that stands for identify the problem and opportunities, define the goals, explore the possible strategies, anticipate outcomes and act, look back and learn. That is the only way to do it. Or if you ever watched... Uh, the magic school bus miss frizzle would say uh take chances make some mistakes and get messy i would say either of those work but with that said i'm dr nardi thanks for joining me today like subscribe share the video i will see you on the next one take care bye bye